baked spaghetti with cream cheese and sour cream is the best. For those of you who aren't familiar with baked spaghetti casserole, it's a classic southern dish in which you boil some spaghetti, you brown some meat, you add some sauce, cheese, and in this case, sour cream and cream cheese. You put it in a casserole dish, you bake it, and it's really good. The star of the show is of course the spaghetti. I have eight ounces or half of a one pound box, about 222 grams of whole wheat spaghetti. I brought some salted water to a boil on high heat, gas mark six out of six. Then I added the spaghetti. I boiled it for eight minutes on high, and then I drained it and then I added half a tablespoon of butter. I'm also going to be adding some meat as well. I'm using ground beef, but if you have ground chicken, turkey, Italian sausage, you could add whatever you have on hand. I actually made enough ground beef for two of these casseroles. So if you're just making one baked spaghetti with cream cheese casserole, that is an eight by eight. I would only saute half a pound of ground beef. I like to use a fairly lean ground beef. So in order to make sure that it's moist, I like to add an equal part of sauteed vegetables, sometimes just onion, or as in this case, onion and carrot. So like I said, for an eight by eight casserole, I would use half a pound of ground beef or chicken and turkey and half a pound of onions and carrots combined. I know it seems like a lot of vegetables, but trust me, once they're cooked, the vegetables will shrink. As you know, I'm not only a Southern chef, but also an Argentine chef. And I got the idea for using equal parts of onions and meat because a lot of people in Argentina, when they make homemade empanadas, they use equal parts of meat and onions. They say it keeps the meat nice and moist. Although I think that the meat was really nice in this casserole, you could definitely make a vegetarian baked spaghetti as well. I would go with a full pound of vegetables. And in addition to the carrots and onions, I would also add some grated zucchini and chopped red or maybe orange bell pepper. This recipe is really versatile, so the possibilities are endless. I have some cheese, I have a one eight ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese. Half will go into the spaghetti and meat. The other half I'll combine with one quarter cup or 60 grams of sour cream for the topping. They'll melt together and form a really nice layer. Here I have half of an eight ounce block of cream cheese. I put it in the microwave for about 40 seconds and now it's softened. I'm going, to act, I'm going to mix that in with the spaghetti and some of the cheese and the beef and it's going to make the casserole really creamy and it's also going to add some tanginess which I think will be a nice contrast with the sweet tomato sauce. I really like this tomato sauce. Francesco Rinaldi, sweet and tasty tomato. You can use the tomato sauce of your choice but this is nice and sweet. And if you know me, I like sweet things. I'm probably going to use all of that 24 ounce jar, but we'll see. I'm also going to add some spices, half a teaspoon each of black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, parsley, oregano, and basil. The sauce is already good on its own, but a little extra doesn't hurt. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, because I didn't add any salt to the beef. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix everything together. You could dirty a bigger bowl if you want to, but I'm just going to do it in this. I have my 8x8 casserole dish lightly buttered, and I'm just going to start putting things into the casserole dish, and I'm just going to mix as I go. So I'm going to do a little bit of spaghetti, some of the meat, then I'm going to do some of the cream cheese, some of the cheese, and 
some of the seasonings. You add your seasonings, make sure to crush them in your fingers first. Helps to release all the flavor. The cheese. The cream cheese. And add some of the sauce. And like I said, I'm going to do a tad bit of salt. And now I'm just going to start mixing. I just finished mixing all of the spaghetti, ground beef, cheese, and cream cheese for the baked spaghetti. I tasted it. I added the spices, some salt, and it's really good. I'm going to add two eggs just because I want this to hold together a little bit more as a casserole. I want to be able to slice it and I think it'll be better if it has some eggs in it. Now I'm just going to mix in the egg and then I'll do the topping. Now that I added in the two eggs to my baked spaghetti with cream cheese and sour cream casserole, it's time for the topping. I mix together the half of the eight ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese and a quarter cup of sour cream along with I'd say an eighth of a teaspoon each of the same spices I put into the casserole itself. So that would be black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, basil, parsley, and oregano. Now I'm putting the topping on the casserole. If the filling weren't so wet, then I would put it down and spread it out like that. But the base is really, uh, I don't know if watery is the right word, but it's not very uh, solid. So I am crumbling it over the top like this. And I'm gonna try to mash it down a little bit and it's okay because the sour cream will help the cheese to spread out. My oven is preheating to 350 degrees. I'm going to bake it uncovered for I'm guessing 30 minutes, but I will let you know. Everything is already cooked, so now I'm going to use my fingers to kind of crumble this. Everything is already cooked. So the only thing that needs to be done is to melt the cheese. This casserole is now ready for the oven. I just took my baked spaghetti out of the oven. It was in at 350 for 40 minutes. This casserole both looked and smelled good, so I couldn't wait until it cooled off enough so that I could dig in. This baked spaghetti with cream cheese was definitely delicious. What I think made this so good was the balance between sweet and tangy flavors. The sweetness in the tomato sauce and the sauteed onions and carrot and the tanginess within the tomato sauce itself as well as the cheese, the sour cream and the cream cheese. In addition to adding more tang, I think that the main purpose of the cream cheese in this dish is to make the spaghetti creamier. Actually, before I made this casserole version, I made a pie version. And in the spaghetti pie, I did not use cream cheese. Even though the filling for the pie was not as creamy as the filling for the casserole, I actually think I preferred the pie. Don't get me wrong, this casserole was definitely good but in a way, I think it was too much of a good thing. I say that because even though the cream cheese did add tang and creaminess, I felt like the extra fat muted the flavors of the tomato sauce, making those not come through quite as strong as they should have. I guess the best comparison would be gelato. One of the reasons why gelato has such an intense flavor is that it usually has a lot less butter fat than normal ice cream does. If there is less fat to coat your tongue, then the flavors of the chocolate or the strawberry or the pistachio or even the vanilla come through a lot stronger. 
don't get me wrong, this was not bad by any means. I liked it and my neighbors liked it. However, even though leaving up the cream cheese would take a little bit of tang away and it would make it a little bit less creamy, I think that the flavor of the tomato sauce itself would come through a lot more and at least in my opinion, it would be better. If you really wanted to add more creaminess, maybe you could add a fat-free or low-fat cream cheese. That would probably help because, like I said, there would be less fat to coat your tongue and mute the tomato flavors. So, if you're looking for a new baked spaghetti casserole recipe, be sure to give this one a try. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!